Hi guys, and welcome to this week's Friday Live Show with me, Mark Thompson, and Tim Goodwin there, sat in Scotland. Good morning, Tim. Morning. I'm, I'm, I'm basically going to go on my show reel for when I go on Fox News. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, you've got to get I the, they do, mate. So let's go back to normal. Yeah, the, the, po- the posh announcer voice just doesn't fit for the Friday Live thing. Oh, yeah. uh, um, so thankfully, we're back for a Friday Live thing. It feels like ages since we've done this, and I'm not sure why, but... Um, I think it's probably only two weeks since we've actually done a Friday live. So. It feels like ages, doesn't it? Yeah. But um, yeah, it was weird doing it on a Thursday night. I didn't particularly, didn't really suit me, especially doing it from home. I, I say, I, I, I hope people enjoyed, because I think some of the feedback we got from yeah. um, the Jeff Wenberg uh, event, uh, the, the, the the live thing we did with him last week, um, the, the feedback was really, really cool. So it was good to see. Um, I think people got an awful lot. It's just it's also good to get a different um, a different voice from time to time on these kind of things because we can talk about content marketing until we're blue in the face, but having somebody on who's been involved in things like lead pages and Zipify pages and does this all day every day on a from a professional standpoint rather than you know our kind of entrepreneurial standpoint. Um, uh, it, it's it's just it's just good to have a different perspective. Yeah, exactly. So right, so this week we're actually going to talk about um, Facebook ads, but we're going to talk about like ads. And I think I'm going to make before we start, I'm going to make an admission. Right, I've always been dubious about Facebook like ads. I, I mean, I really have. I thought, do you know what? Why do why do it? Because like, although you know, Facebook's not going to give the reach and stuff like that, and then suddenly last night about two o'clock in the morning in bed, the light bulb came on. Because I was thinking about the, the, the show today, and I suddenly got it. It was like the the mist lifting, and I thought, "Oh my God, yes, I can see why you wish to be doing this." So I'm gonna let, I'm gonna, Tim could do a lot of chatting today, mm. um, and we're just gonna dive straight into this. First off, morning, Mark. Morning, morning Donald. Uh, or shall we get Tim to pronounce it again? Donald. Um, how you doing, guys? Good to see you on here. Good to everyone else. Hello to everyone else who's listening. Right, Tim. Like campaigns. Why should we do <laughs> Facebook? No, why are Facebook like campaigns possibly the only adverts you need to run for your business? Um, th- that's actually probably the best question to ask um, because, um, <laughs> well, fuck <laughs> is wearing off. <laughs> um, Sorry, just reading comments as they're flying in. It's really distracting sometimes, and I have to, I'll, I'll have to turn them off. Actually, that's probably a good plan. I'm going to turn it off while I talk because otherwise I'm just getting distracted. Um, uh, so why why are like campaigns, why are Facebook like campaigns probably the only campaign a lot of businesses actually need? Um, it's a good question. Basically, um, we we've been talking about audience an awful lot of late and building an audience. And it's actually, um, for me, it's one of the easiest and cheapest ways to grow an audience um, that, of people who follow you, who who like what you're about. Um, so to give you to give you another other ideas of audience and audience building. So SEO and building content and doing all of that kind of stuff with your blogs, it's slow. Most blog posts take six months before they actually get any traction. And to be honest with you, SEO traffic, whilst it is great, converting that to somebody who is following you consistently all the time takes a long time. Podcasts, again, there's a there's a ramp up period. There's a time where it takes a while, unless you've got a pre-existing audience. It's like starting a new podcast and nobody knows who the hell you are. It, it's a real slow slog way of doing it. YouTube channels, Um, whether you're doing like uh, building an email list, all those things take time. And it's um, with Facebook, um, you can actually pay to acquire an audience very, very cheaply. And that's one of the reasons why I started doing about this time last year, actually, um, is when I started. So around about February, uh, mid-February, uh, 2019, I started running a like campaign. Um, the reason for starting the like campaign was 
um, after seven years of running Lean Greens, we had around about 8,000 people, um, uh, around about 8,000 people liked us on Facebook. And the problem with those 8,000 people were that they weren't buying anything. When I did an analysis of that audience, I was like, I've got 8,000 people who followed us. I can basically extract those and say, okay, of those 8,000, how many have bought or how many haven't bought more to the point so I could create an audience on, on Facebook of people so I could target people who like our page but haven't bought. And there was about 7,500 people who liked Lean Greens but didn't buy. Our engagement was crap on Facebook for our, you know, for, for the content that we're putting up. People weren't commenting, people weren't doing anything at all. And it's like, well, these are obviously the wrong people. They're not our target audience. And Mark's run away. Maybe he's got a great idea. Um, or he's going to write something on the whiteboard. So um, with, with, with the Facebook um, like campaign, over the last 12 months, I've grown an audience from that 8,000 of kind of people who just aren't interested in engaging with our stuff to now close on, I think it's 44, Just it's just ticked over 44,000 people who like Lean Greens. And of that audience, there's a, um, we, we know that we're getting better engagement because the posts that we stick up are getting better engagement every single day. Um, we're also seeing through other ad campaigns that we're running targeting people who like our page, that they're converting to become buyers. The people who engage with our posts on Facebook are buying more regularly as well. So I'm going to kind of show you through some of like um, there's some of the campaigns that we're running, but I also show you some of the, the so-called success metrics. Um, one of the questions that we got prior to this uh, running this call was from Dave Toomey asking about what are the success metrics that we look at. I'll be brutally honest, it's tough to kind of get a real clear sort of picture, but you can get a, an overall trend. You can get a feeling for <coughs> whether they're working or not, whether it's useful based upon engagement and whether it's uh, whether people are buying your products or not. So that's those. Before we go any further, right? Go on. We, need, we need to address the elephant in the room, which Donald mentioned. And I know what your view is going to be, and I think my view is going to be absolutely similar. Take the question up again. Yeah. There are a few short courses out there about getting 10,000 likes cheap on, in, in a week using non-tier one countries, then switching over to tier one to get cheaper likes. I would say no, 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 no. You just, what you're just going to do is dilute your brand, yeah. dilute your audience, yeah, um, so, and then get stupid comments every time you post something. <laughs> um, yes, very much so. Um, yeah, so no, I would not do that. I mean, all these little glitches and not glitches and ways of tricking facebook and doing all this stuff ignore it just do the genuine stuff set yourself your brand up to stop to start with in a way that reflects your values if your values are tricking facebook into giving you cheaper likes we'll do that then um, but it's just going to carry through your whole corporate business model and build and no, I wouldn't. Even, I wouldn't bother doing it. So you can obviously, as 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 Donal has said, that like the getting cheap likes is um, it, it's easy to do from non tier one um, countries. Okay, um, you know, Sally just said that she she tried it last year and regretted it massively. I've done the same. I've you know chased after those non tier one things. It's not cool. Um, you can get likes as little as like three and four pence per like, but it really doesn't add anything. It will give like a allegedly social proof, um, but that's it. Okay, so um, we turn those off really, really quickly. Um, so you'll see that the like campaigns that we're running at the moment, they run anywhere between 20 pence to around about 50, 55 pence per like. Um, and it's, uh, I will show you that we've been running since, um, since December is, is working really quite nicely at the moment. It's kind of like the cost of the ad, uh, the cost of the, 
um, the likes is steadily going up, which I would expect because people, you get a certain amount of ad fatigue and stuff like that. And, you know, Facebook's done an awful lot of the optimization early on to kind of give you the cheapest likes possible. Um, and it's just progressively getting more and more expensive. Um, so you can, you, you will do need to do a certain amount of switching up of ads. But last year, between February last year and around about November, December time, I ran the same ad and I just left it alone. And I was like, it, you know, that's what got us from the 8,000 up to the sort of 40,000 mark. This year I've um, switched up the ads, um, taken the best creatives. And in the first month of uh, this year, the month, first month and a half, we've added another, I think it's another three and a half thousand likes um, to our page. And like, we've got them cheaper than what we were getting them last year. So, um, so the strategy is fairly, fa fairly simple. So what I want to do is I want to, the way I want to explain it is, um, <laughs> yeah, sorry, I'm just reading Sally's, Sally's next question. Can you recover a page that has 10,000 mostly non-tier likes? Or would it be better to start again? If it's like if you've got eleven thousand people following and ten thousand of them are like non-tier one likes, they're just basically cheapos. I would have just ditched the page and start again. Um, it's it's um, you can go through and you can block non-tier one people. I.e., you need to figure out from their name where they're from and like you can block them or delete them for, or um, force them to unlike your page. But um, yeah, you'd need to, it, that's a very, very slow process. So if you're deep in that, if you've got say 11,000 people, then just, you know, just ditch the whole page and start again. Uh, so the other question is, do you have to run ads again to the people on your page in order to reach them? Not necessarily. Um, and I will show you that we do, but this is all about acquiring a audience and a type of person that is more likely to buy from you as cheaply as possible. So you're building the audience as cheaply as possible to then ultimately going out and buy, a, a, you know, advertising to a better quality lead. So like the the, the likelihood that they're going to convert is much, much higher. Make sense? Yeah. Um, Sorry, one second. I'll say before we get any further, like Tim's going to adjust something. Um, Tim's going to do a, training session or a course a short course in smo pro so we on the all access pass on this um also if let me just call up the banners you know if this is your first time watching us or you want to know how tim runs his uh facebook ads we did show number 36 called the scalable ad system check it out it's absolutely brilliant um you won't find people teaching this in courses because most people teaching Facebook ad courses don't run Facebook ads um, as, as much as they'd like you to believe whereas this is what Tim does every day so check out show number 36 scale of ads and you've also got within the all access pass at serious marketers only um, our one dollar Facebook ad system we can start advertising from a dollar a day Whew. that's the marketing out of the way um, so quickly just go back to that last question again um it, it just I, i'm not sure whether i answered that as clearly as i could have done one of say the my whole principle i was actually talking to mark about this before we started this call my whole marketing principle or ad running principle is to eliminate as many people as possible as cheaply as possible so like marketing is a game of elimination i've said it a bazillion times so it's basically putting off people who are never going to buy your product and doing that as quickly and as cheaply as possible and getting that little subset you know of people who are most likely to become buyers and acquiring that audience as cheaply as possible or, or reaching them as cheaply as possible so the, the the principle that we're going for here is we go yes we're buying act, buying an audience that we don't necessarily own it's we still have to do a certain amount of work to reach them, even though that we've got their Facebook, we've got their like on our page. Um, it's it just means that the adverts down further down my funnel or effective because we've eliminated all of the drafts and we're only putting an advert in front of somebody 
um, if they are highly likely to convert. Um, and that's the principle that we're, we're, play, we're at play here. It's like the, 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 the Facebook like campaign is kind of like the front end audience, if you like. And I, I was talking to a business um, earlier in the week. Um, there's a local um, cafe, hotel, restaurant that is situated at the bottom of one of the um, one of the most popular mountain biking destinations in the UK. And I've got to know the owner of this place very, very well. He's a really good friend. I've been mountain biking with him. And he was asking, he asked me the real glib question of like, oh, could you come in and like show me Facebook ads like, you know, uh, you know, over coffee or something? I'm like, OK, well, that's, a you know, showing somebody Facebook ads who's not experienced Facebook ads before. It's kind of like, you know, it's not a short answer. It's not a five minutes over a coffee thing. And I thought. Well, actually, no, it, it can be. Um, for a business like that, and actually for 99% of businesses, um, this this kind of system that we're going to talk about briefly, it, and I'm going to kind of show you the shell of it, and obviously when we create the course within SMO Pro, it will go into more detail, but you'll get a good idea of what we're talking about here um, today. It's kind of like, um, for, for most businesses, this is all you need to do because you want to build an audience of people who are most likely to come and spend money at your business. So um, very, very simply, I'm going to break this up into two halves. There's basically there's the analytical side of like running a like campaign and the very um, it's, it's not complicated on Facebook to create a like campaign. Um, I'm going to go like super fast through that section um, uh, and then we'll talk about the creatives as a separate thing. Um, as I've talked about before with Facebook ads, you have to ha use both sides of your brain and it's better to split the task up. So you go, OK, I'm going to create a bunch of creatives of like I'm going to decide how, I, uh, you know, what the picture is going to be and what the text is going to be. And you're using one side of the brain, which is your creative side. And then you've got the other side of it, which is the analytical part of it and the technical part of setting up a, a, a Facebook campaign. To be honest with you, the technical part is dead easy. The the other side, the you know creative bit, is actually the bit which takes the time. So um, really, really quickly, I'm just going to dive in and show you. Hold on a second. Let's share my screen first. That might be a smart way of doing it. Do you do? I mean, the, the reason it appeals to me now, now that I've got my head around it, is the amount of data you're going to collect. You're going to identify your audience pretty easily. Very much. So. You, you've got all that data that you can use there you go mate cool and i'll make that boom there you go so what i'm going to do is i'm just going to open up uh ads manager oops as always like you know just ignore my numbers because i say i've got a lot of stuff happening on these things so nothing's particularly um uh private as such but <laughs> so when you go to create a, a like campaign it's dead 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 simple so you go into your ads manager um you can do this off of um the whole go onto your facebook page and you can click the button which says promote by page or promote by business and it will come up with the what i call the for dummies version of this um but um i would certainly suggest Get using Facebook Business Manager and the the, the Ads Manager. Um, it gives you all of the levers to pull. So um, when you're creating this um, campaign, you just click on engagement. You go to page, click on page likes. So you want pay, page likes. Give it a name. So I'm just going to call it Test for the moment. But I have my own template. You can do CBO um, for those of you who are a little bit more nerdy from the end of this month, I think it's February 28th, um, campaign budget will be the uh, the default. Basically, you will not be able to run ad sets with, um, you won't be able to set the budget at an ad set level. Everything will be set at a campaign level. Um, but I click that on, and all I do for 99% of people, 
daily budget of five pounds is actually more than enough. The um, the, the the restaurant that I was talking about a second ago, I would recommend literally two pounds a day, and they could be easily adding like ten to twenty new likes onto their Facebook page every single day. So you can use different bid strategies, but to be honest with you, I just go for lowest cost. Click on continue. Decide which page you're going to promote. And this is where you, um, you've you got to go, okay, so who is it that we're actually um, uh, promoting to? So I'm going to use the example of the um, cafe, restaurant, hotel, and mountain biking countryside in the UK. So basically, I'm going to target people who are living in this location. Okay, this is one of the gotchas on Facebook ads. You could use people living or recently in this location. That's the default normally. But I was like living in this location, UK, set your UK, your age and gender, and then you can go detailed targeting. And all I'm going to type in is mountain biking. So I'm targeting all mountain bikers, interests, and it's come up with 2.2 million people in the UK. And on a daily basis, my five pounds will allegedly give me between 17 and 57 likes. Huge. Okay. Leave the placements as automatic. To be honest with you, um, there's for like campaigns, it restricts most um, placements. Um, it will either do Facebook newsfeed, um, which is on desktop and mobile, and that's it. That's pretty much the only placements you get to choose for your um, uh, for your like campaigns. Okay, you can set ads uh, um, uh, ad spend limits. So spend limits on an ad set, but we pretty much have like, um, uh, you know, we'll, we'll target, say, for example, lookalike audiences and we'll like do four or five different ad sets. But to be honest with you, you could just run it off just one ad set like this. So I'm targeting all people who like mountain biking and that's all I'm doing. And I'm going to just click on continue. And that's when you go away and you start creating your creative. Okay. So there are... Um, recommended aspect ratios one by one or 19, nine by 16, you know, I would, I would go for, it doesn't really matter to be honest with you. Um, it, it does because the square ones show, I think it's 78% more. Yeah. Um, it, real estate. It, yeah. Again, it's one of those on a mobile, you probably want square on a desktop. You probably want the horizontal version, um, you know, so, but that's, that's kind of like going, the next level that's kind of like if you want to do it absolutely perfectly to be honest with you it really doesn't matter the thing that we test more than anything else is the image and the text to a certain degree so it's put in a certain amount of text already here for you as it's just taken a default text but it's like recommends of recommends 125 characters or less so in here we would put our ad creative text so I'm going to show you now some of the creatives that have been working well for us. Um, it, Mark, has anybody come up with any questions so far? Um, Ian's got a huge one we can address later on. Okay, fair enough. I'll, um, <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> we put out, we're just going to block the whole screen. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, block us out completely. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you um, some of the creatives that we have. Um, so if you don't know this already, when you go into your ads manager, let's click out of that and go away. So you've got all of the um, your table. What I've done is if I go into my likes campaign, let's go into that one. Um, what I can do is I can highlight all of the ad sets and then I can show more tools and click on creatives. And what it'll do is it shows you essentially the creatives page, which is the one I'm on right now. Okay. So as you can see, I've got four creatives running at the moment, and it gives you a kind of like a preview of them. And you can see that I've got one, which is knocking it out of the park. So 2,000 results, 2,165 results. That's 2,165 likes. This one's had only 231, 120, 108, and it shows you the pricing of it. So obviously, it's um, uh, it Facebook is favoring the lower cost one, the one that's getting the most amount of likes, which is what it will always do. I recommend, suggest, I, I suggest um, doing, trying sort of like create. 
So if I click on that or highlight, hover over that, you'll see my creative in all its glory. It's the image is nothing special. Um, it's we just try to go for something that's got a little bit of pop to it. So the image um, is the thing that's going to attract the attention. Um, this is the same image that we started with last February. I've just transferred it to a new campaign um, and it's still winning. It's still the winning creative. Um, you look at, look at the text. Uh, it's really very, very simple. You've only got 125 characters to play with. Struggle to get your daily veg, question mark, like lean greens for how to conquer cravings and appetite. And then it's got my uh, got a URL there, which you don't necessarily need, but I just added it in because I had the space. Um, for, the, for the mountain biking cafe, that kind of thing, um, uh, what I would, the kind of text that I would use is something like, you know, love mountain biking, good food and drink, um, like Glentress Hotel for all of your mountain biking accommodation needs or something like that. You know, that's totally off the cuff kind of um, creative, but that's all you really need to do. What you're doing is you're calling out the, um, the type of person that you want to attract. If the person doesn't struggle to get their daily veg, they're not gonna like my page. If they're not struggling with cravings and appetite, they're not going to like clean greens. We're trying to attract people who struggle with cravings and appetite and struggle to get their daily veg in. That's basically all we're trying to do. So that's what the copy is calling people out to. Um, as you can see, we're getting an average of around about 36 pence per page like. That's it, really. As you can see, I've been testing other things like a real simple, simple image of just the, the tub, which you know gets some results, which is half reasonable. Um, you know, about the same kind of price point. That one sucked for whatever reason, didn't appeal to our target audience. You can see the text is all the same. And again, that one just for whatever reason didn't pop. Same text, but just didn't attract the attention. So, you know, it's one of the things I'm going to be doing next is I want to create more images like this, but also, um, you know, try and target the people that are most likely to be our buyers, which are this one's quite a feminine image. I'm going to change that to more masculine image because 80% of our customers right now are male. Um, so we need to create something that's uh, a little bit more. Sorry? That's a bit of a swap over, isn't it? Um, it is, yeah. Um, and that's that's come in the last 12 months. Um, we based, I was sat down with my good friend Michael Christon um, yesterday morning, and uh, I was asking about my landing page and some of my creatives, and he was... His, his answer was, and I wrote it down, he says, your stuff needs a sex change. <laughs> um, so, um, and that's basically it. That's that's all the, the campaign is. I say there are some like more, there's some details which, you know, can and can't, uh, can and will make a bit of a difference. And I'll go into the much, much more like the, the sort of breakdown when we do the, the mini course in the SMO, SMO Pro. But this should get you started. You can, uh, we run the campaign at 20 pounds a day at the moment. You can run it, I say, from five pounds a day, even less if you want to. There's really no reason why you shouldn't. Woo, stop sharing. Cool. Right, um, I just worked out Ian was, up, was replying to Sally's question. All right, okay. Actually, you got some good ideas there from that one. Nice, nice one, Ian. Um, right, so your basic like campaigns, you're gonna get, what are you gonna get from them? You're gonna get your data. You're gonna know who your demographics are. People who are liking it are your demographic, they're your audience. It's gonna give you people to target. Um, if you're running sort of the hot seven stuff that we teach in the uh, one dollar a day ads and that, um, you, 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 you'll you see us talk about it loads of times. Now, those are the people you can follow up with them. They've been on your site. They've watched a video. They visited an article that you've written. They've done something and interacted with your brand or your business somehow. And you can target them to like your page straight afterwards. So anyone who's done anything in the last seven days or had any touch points with your business in the last seven days, you know, stick a like campaign in front of them. 
makes it probably the easiest way you can do it. So I want to just having a quick look actually, because one of the things that we can, um, what, what I've been able to pull is um, audience insights is starting to become less and less useful in Facebook. Um, unless, um, so you can't say, say for example, take your customer list now and get um, audience insights from it. However, you can <clears throat> you can get audience insights um, for your Facebook page. Okay, so you can basically go into audience insights on Facebook, and actually it will show you um, basically the demographics, the page likes, the location, and all that kind of stuff for the people who like your page. <clears throat> so you know, for us, we've you know we've seen a swing from a seventy five percent female audience to now it's around about 50 50 um uh, for, for our whole audience um you know a lot of the people who are buying from us are guys you know we've got a real sort of like strong hotbed between sort of 35 and 45 guys um that's like where one of our sort of hot you know, demographics um you know whether they're um, the most they're mostly engaged or, or married and stuff like that they're you know well educated blah 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 um, so we can we can get some decent data from audience insights about your pages but you can't necessarily anymore from like the the, the list the uh, the customer list that you get very strange oh, unless of course your um your names your business name is Cambridge Analytica and you, then you can get anything you want <laughs> hi um, I'm sorry, I'm just having a quick look at Ian's, is it all Ian's comments? Yeah, we to, to Sally's issue of having 10,000 uh, tier three or whatever followers. Yeah. Um, one of the things which we, which we found with this, and I say it's like, you know, you can, it's one of those set and forget campaigns to a certain degree. Um, as you probably saw from like the, the graph, I don't know whether you, I didn't mention it in the, in the video, in, in that last piece was, there it does the the cost the cost of the the likes have pr progressively increased over the last six weeks which is fine um it's just that i'll find either a different audience or i'll redo the creatives or something like that just to kind of spice it up a little bit but to be honest with you i'm okay at the you know the level it's at right now certainly for my for a nutritional supplement brand for some for something like that to get on average 35 pence likes mm. I, I i will do that all day every day and i say I, i'm spending 20 quid a day on it at the moment just to continually drip feed new prospects into my into my brand so one of the other things which i was going to um, really talk about was some of the success metrics and also some of the indications that it's helped um uh, just to give you an idea i'm just going to make sure i've got the right screen for that so i can show you and I'm, i'll flick back to sharing my screen a second just want to make sure that i show you the right one so we have um like retargeting campaigns running um for do, 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 where is it yeah let's go into that one right i'll share my screen uh where is the screen thingy uh, there we go Share screen, share screen. It's just about to go like all zappy on us again. There we go. Yep. Um, so in here we've got, um, this is like, um, this is my retargeting campaign. So what I'm doing is I'm actually retargeting people who are page likers, page engagers and website visitors. So you can see for the page engagers and page likers, uh, let's show you the right um, KPIs <clears throat> so you can get an idea. So um, from a thousand pounds spend, we're getting a five and a half times return on ad spend for people who've engaged with our page. That's brilliant. Um, for page likers, even though it's much smaller, I might split this out into its own campaign. It's only had 13 conversions, but a 3.4 return on ad spend so basically from that 167 quid it's uh, something arranged around around about five or six hundred quid something like that 
Um, so those are my kind of success metrics to a certain degree. We do also also have um, uh, how people have been engaging with our posts. So this time last year, I'd be lucky if I would get, you know, if I saw one of my um, posts get over a thousand people um, reached, then I was like happy, really, really happy. Um, but now literally every single one, bar a few of the most recent ones, are getting plenty of organic reach. We have, if I scroll down, I'll show you one example of something that's gone absolutely nuts. So we have this one video, 22, 23,000 people organic reach with a whole bunch of comments and likes. I think that one also ran at, uh, where is it? It's further down. There we go. Yeah, that same video which we posted a month prior to that, 31,000 people, organic reach, a whole bunch of likes and engagements and shares and all that kind of stuff. Um, but you, as you can see, all of my organic posts are getting decent engagement. On all, it's all organic, um, whereas before we'd be struggling to get like even even over a 500 or so. Um, so it's one of the... Um... As a vindicates a like campaign straight away, doesn't it? Yeah, and it's like also the actual purchase costs and the ROAS you were showing there. Is... Yeah, I, I say I don't necessarily like seeing or using like basically I don't get paid for engagement. Um, <laughs> you know, we don't get paid for likes and shares and comments and all that kind of stuff on our Facebook ads, but to show that the people who, who are engaging with our content. And people who are liking our page, we're getting a strong return on ad spend, and that for me is, um, yeah, is, that, is way more important to us. Yeah, right. Two things before going for yesterday, I published an article. You may have seen it, um, and it is Facebook best practices. But forget the best practices bit. What I've also included in that is a list of you know what ROAS means. Um, Okay, we all know what the terms mean in CT, CTR and CPM, but what does it actually mean to your business? And what you can, can you tell from the figures that Facebook give you? So I recommend having a quick look at that. Right, so we've got a question, and it's quite a good one. Yeah, so I'm just, just reading it. Uh, how yeah. do you determine tier one, tier two audiences, please? Um, for me, and this is different depending on where you are in the world, um, tier, tier one for me is uh, UK audiences, so UK geographical. Um, in America, if you are in America and your customers are in America, that would be your tier one. Tier two, tier three. Um, tier two for us is basically EU, um, English speaking countries, that kind of thing. Tier three is basically people outside of that, which is like Philippines, India, um, uh, you know all of those other other countries that you can target um but are not ever going to be able to buy your product or service the the likes and the um the likes are much much cheaper from those tier three countries um <clears throat> if if you are servicing those particular countries good for you um but they do tend to be um say much much cheaper but lower quality i think it's it's almost wrong to say lower quality. It's just if they're not right, if they're not, they're not ever going to buy your product, there's no point really getting them. So, and it really doesn't help. Well, like Sally was saying, she got a whole bunch of tier three um, followers, likes, um, which is all well and good. And it, it does kind of trick the algorithm, the Facebook algorithm in a short term, but long term it doesn't. Um, especially if you want to run like campaigns for consistently um, over the period of like what we have with over the last 12 months. So, you know, going back to the example that I've been explaining, uh, sorry, uh, and the likes from those countries can come from click farms. Yeah, absolutely. You can get likes from click farms like that are supposedly showing as tier one countries as well, but yeah, it's, um, and we do get some junk coming in, but it's fine, we can deal with that. Um, uh, going back to the example that I was talking about earlier, which is to do with the mountain biking venue, um, what I've the, basically the, the, what I've asked them to do is very simply go away and get some images and come up with like a 125 character bit of text. 
literally one campaign for two pounds a day with four different ad creators, i.e. four different images to see which ones pop um, and which ones get the most likes. And then we'll we'll just multiply that out. Once, you know, once they're happy that they're getting engagement and more people liking and following their stuff, that's for me is the because now what they can do once they start building their audience and they're creating posts and content on a consistent basis on their Facebook page, which is of interest to that particular audience, um, they're going to get more bookings, going to have more people staying, uh, you know, staying in their hotel, more people stopping at that cafe rather than the other cafe that's just around the corner. Um, and they'll have a full restaurant. And that's that's what it's all about. It's basically just getting that audience, stronger audience, people being aware that you exist. And for a lot of businesses, that's the biggest problem is that they have, there is no awareness of their existence. And this is a way of actually just doing that. Yeah, exactly. So one thing we'll be doing, or I'll be doing, I'll be running some uh, campaigns now for SMO to the SMO page. Please, 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 please. If you're watching this, if you're watching this at now or any time, go to facebook.com, serious marketers only, and like the page. Come on, give us some likes. Woo! <laughs> have, you, have, you, have, you, have you read Ian's last comment? <laughs> oh, don't I understand it? Oh, what, yeah. what about the, oh. <laughs> I'm not sure you want to post that. <laughs> <laughs> we won't read it out, so people on the podcast can miss out, but everyone else can see that. Ah, <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. <laughs> um, the question yeah. is: what, One of the joys of living here in southern Spain <laughs> is if you're at the airport and the flight from Moscow comes in. <laughs> There is, yeah, that's a, that's a very interesting flight. Never-ending flow of... Um, Let's just leave it at that. A very interesting flight. <laughs> um, how, do you right. deal, how do you deal with the click farms? Um, for, the, for the UK stuff, it's basically, I can tell very quickly um, whether somebody's liked our page that is basically not a real um, person. Generally, they don't have a profile picture. Yeah. Like, it's like the blank face. And I, I just basically put yeah, an egg. Yeah. So I'll, I'll go into, um, I'll, I'll go into like the uh, Facebook, my Facebook page manager. In the back end of that, you can actually um, uh, block on ban or boot out, like delete certain people um, from from your page. So I'll just go through if it's like a foreign name um you know if it's, yeah, and well no it's like foreign well no it's not like that it's like say for example if it's all chinese characters as the name then i'll i'll just remove them because there's just no point um if they're just like a blank face i'll just remove that is remove them as well okay, sorry oh, kurt schmidt's okay <laughs> oh, i love it when i get to him <laughs> Uh, right. So, anything else? While we're on this, anyone got any more questions before we wind this up? I appreciate it's like a weird thing to do, and that's that's the bit that like whenever I've talked to people about like campaigns, especially because you've heard every guru under the sun going, "Never run like campaigns; they're a waste of time." Um, which I, you know, I think is a sheer dangerous thing to suggest because ultimately. You know, you don't know until you try these, these these sort of things. And for us, it's you know, it's part of the process that we've gone through over the last twelve months to grow our business, to get a stronger audience. And it's like we don't necessarily get we don't. One of the biggest problems that we have as a brand is that we struggle to get email subscribers, um, uh, as in prospects to sign up, because it's kind of like people are kind of very protective of their email address. Um, and it's a lot easier for us to, you know, grow grow an audience on Facebook. It's a lot cheaper, um, and we can reach more people quicker. And as long as we're not an absolute dick about like what kind of things we post, and uh, we'll suddenly get our Facebook page banned and all that kind of stuff, which is not going to happen because we're super conservative. It's 
you know, I was thinking, you know, mid-century furniture from Azerbaijan or wherever he gets it. Um, you know, it's like the Newcastle mostly. <laughs> But it's it's stuff like um, it's businesses like his again. It's the perfect thing to build an audience of people who like you know um, mid-century furniture from Newcastle. Um, yeah. But because <laughs> yeah, it can be quite difficult to get people to sign up to an email list of you know uh, to to get an, a weekly email about you know what's their latest mid-century furniture stock like. Um, you know, it, as I say, it's difficult sometimes, and it is difficult for a lot of businesses to get those email addresses. So this is just a different way of growing an audience. It's just a different audience platform. Cool. Right. So Tim's going to be, when are you going to do this course, by the way, mate? Oh, when, no, no, Ando. <laughs> when, when the dog steps now, now, me. Now do it with the big one. <laughs> no, <laughs> 50 kilo Bernese mountain dog on my knee, not a chance. <laughs> Go on, get to bed. Good boy. Good boy. There we go. Ah, oh, dear. Oh, yeah. When are you going to be doing this training? Um, I'm going to, I'll try and do it over the weekend actually, because I've got a, a, a relatively quiet weekend and we've got Sp Storm Dennis coming. So, um, I, or I think actually it might have just arrived looking at the weather outside. Yeah, uh, it's only, let me check. Oh, it's only 18 degrees today. Brrr. <laughs> Not a cloud in the sky. <laughs> barely, um, barely seen over oh, zero today. Right. So if once Tim produces that, sticks it in a Dropbox folder or a Google Drive folder, I'll get it and I'll upload it to the uh, all access pass and you'll all have access hopefully by early next week, to Tim's training on likes. How cool is that? And We're if you're not with... in the Remote Pro, there is Sorry? a link. What's the link what? for Remote Pro? Yeah, probably is. I'll tell you what. Go there first. Yeah. Check, check. Join our free group first, and then you'll get access to the Pro group. Um, so, so Ian's saying, I work with Facebook to create Facebook's product, which is attention. He's absolutely right. Facebook's product is attention. And get some of it cheap. Be a publisher first, advertiser second. 100% absolutely true. Um, and, and that's, you kind of have to play the game a little bit with Facebook. And, you know, f f Facebook don't have like campaigns as a, as a strategy. They don't have it as a campaign structure for nothing. To use it, and it's kind of one of the things that you know I've been exploring all of the other different campaign types on on your Facebook on Facebook. They have them for a reason. They're not there for you know for fun. Everybody kind of like automatically defaults to the conversion um, campaigns or getting people to visit your website more kind of type campaigns, which is all well and good, but they are truly the most expensive ones. So one of the things that I've been playing around with is obviously Facebook likes, but I've also been playing around with um, uh, reach campaigns. And I, you know, we get um, instead of paying five and ten and twenty pounds uh, uh, CPMs uh, cost per thousands of views, I'm paying about seventy five p per thousand um, to see my ads. And I've been playing around with those to kind of again, it's kind of like trying to draw the uh, as many people as possible into our business who are interested in our stuff but for as cheaply as possible so i'm putting my ad in front of more people but it's like the people who land on my on my website i can then retarget uh, um again and it's like it's it's a cheaper way to reach more people so that's why that's why i do it um you know so look at the other other campaign structures in facebook there, there's some really really interesting different stuff Mark's just looking out the window, wondering whether he's going to sit on. No, I, I was going to pull the, the blind up and show you the bright blue skies because Dave said it's got horizontal rain in Ireland. <laughs> <laughs> I thought, well, do you know, what? I might just show him one of the blue skies. Oh, it's Mikey Christon. Look, Mikey Christon's here. Okay, I'll, I'll put his message up. Right, so quickly, 
HTTPS, join smo.com forward slash all access. You'll get access to our all access pass and our pro group where we talk about crap like this all day long. We will if you want to. Uh, Prospect is only going to buy from you if they remember you exist. Those likes keep your brand front and center in their mind. All hail Michael. That is the truth. All hail Michael. I'll tell you what, you, you actually <laughs> no. get that uh, tattooed. Probably on your forehead, mate. How about that? Because we've got enough room for that. So actually, Craig got enough light, room for it on my forehead as well. <laughs> like lean greens, I was tattooed on my forehead. Yeah, no, uh, that, that's, um, in fact, no, I'll leave, I'll leave that up because that makes more, much more sense than what we were saying. Right, guys, thank you very much for coming and listening. And uh, any questions, please you know, ask in the free group, ask in the paid group. Look, there's Tim, Tim training his dog in the background. <laughs> um, okay. yes. but to, uh, we're here to answer questions. You can put your questions underneath the, the, this video, wherever you find it on YouTube or Facebook. Um, We'll probably do a two, a two minute version of this at some point. Um, with all the, all just the facts, man. Right. Have a great weekend, guys. See you next week. And hope you guys don't in England and Ireland don't get too wet. I might send you a photograph when I'm walking on the beach. I'm just wondering why Mark, Dave Toomey is like sending us an Amazon. Well, I know I think what he's free talking about. Shit. This stuff. Uh, <laughs> I put it down on the wall. I had a script up, up there. Ah, it's all No, I did have it on the wall, but I took um, um, I had a, da, 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 a script on there when I was recording something. I haven't replaced it. Um, uh, Mike, Mike Greiston, his his whole office is like cladded in that you walk in and it's like a sensory deprivation tank yeah, it's, so it's really it's really good stuff i'm gonna put mine back up as soon as we finish here uh, that's after the horse has bolted type thing right guys we're going see you later bye